All right. Let me try it again. Good morning, everyone. Uh, <laughs> my name is Alex Klar. Um, I'm an attorney with the uh, corporate and commercial department here at this firm. Uh, I have the honor today to talk to you guys about some of the basics of uh, doing uh, business in China. Uh, this is pretty much a, a general overview. So I hope I'm, I'm not going to bore you with, with things that are, that are a little bit too basic. I'm happy to answer more detailed questions if you have them after this lecture or um, uh, sometime later today. It's no problem. Um, so anyhow, um, you're deciding to do business in China. Uh, basically, uh, you want to understand the opportunities. Uh, basically, China, is, as you probably know, is a, is a country of a population of 1.3 billion people. That excites a lot of people, um, businessmen. Um, they think about the fact that most Chinese laborers or factory workers make roughly about uh, between one and two thousand U.S. dollars a year, and they and they think, wow, that's that's amazing. I mean, we can make some some fabulous amount of profits. But the fact is, you really have to understand the opportunities. China's very, very complicated, and really the investment in China has to be viewed as a long-term, uh, from, from a long-term perspective, not, not a short-term gain. Uh, you have to see whether your company is a good fit with China. Uh, as I just alluded to, uh, investment in China is, is a complicated endeavor, as, as we shall see uh, shortly. Um, so we're not talking short-term profits here. Uh, we have to, you have to see if your company has an international perspective, if it has um, uh, experience with uh, working overseas with different cultures and dealing with foreign governments. Uh, in terms of finding the correct path, uh, originally investing in China used to be uh, relatively simple from the perspective that uh, the Chinese government regulated the specific number of vehicles you could invest in to come into China. It was heavily regulated. Uh, you had to deal with the higher levels of government. Nowadays, uh, this has all been opened up from a regulatory sense. Uh, there are many uh, types of uh, foreign, um, foreign investment vehicles that you can take, uh, such as joint ventures, wholly foreign-owned enterprises. Uh, nowadays, our firm is seeing a lot of mergers and acquisition deals, so that means a lot of foreign investors are getting a little bit more sophisticated. Also, the Chinese regulatory framework is also getting rather sophisticated. It is allowing uh, foreigners to buy into a lot of uh, sectors of the Chinese economy. Uh, also, um, there's the path of uh, using special purpose vehicles going in through uh, Hong Kong or the British Virgin Islands or um, Mauritius. These are um, offshore type of options that can be considered. Um, and a lot of our clients actually come in initially and they'll spend a year or two just studying the market. They'll set up a, what is known as a representative office, which means they're not allowed to do any direct business in China, but they are allowed to maintain an office and make contacts and you know, basically handshake and meet government officials and that type of thing. So in terms of understanding the opportunities, uh, over $70 billion worth of foreign investment has been uh, placed into China in a single year. Uh, that's uh, um, an FDI number. China, as you probably know, is one of the biggest uh, recipients of foreign direct investment. That number probably isn't counting the amount of merger and acquisition uh, activity that is also taking place. A lot of, as I mentioned previously, a lot of foreign investors come into China and they don't set up a new company. They just outright buy a Chinese company. Uh, China will be the largest economy by uh, 2025. That remains to be seen, but that's what a lot of people who are looking into the, uh, into the, uh, um, into the uh, tea leaves are, are saying. In terms of uh, China and its opportunities, uh, cutting costs to meet global demands, obviously this is a uh, prevalent concern of any company. The fact is, is that China's uh, labor costs are not the cheapest in the world anymore. Obviously, um, I, I think areas like India, uh, places in Africa, obviously, um, Southeast, certain Southeast Asian countries have lower labor costs. But the fact is, is China can outcompete those countries because they are very serious about attracting foreign investment and putting in uh, the infrastructure network that is needed uh, to, to assist uh, foreign, foreign investors 
along with the regulatory framework that is being placed in quite rapidly to assist uh, foreigners so that foreigners know that their investment in China is solid and, and can't be taken away. Oh, in terms of accessing a fast-growing local market, this is kind of interesting. A lot of our uh, uh, clients in the past were not allowed, uh, foreign investors were not allowed to sell a lot of their inventory or a lot of their products to the local Chinese market. So it's quite interesting. A lot of people keep talking about 1.3 billion consumers. But the fact is, is that the Chinese laws didn't really allow a lot of foreign companies to sell to the local market. This has actually changed in the last five years. The Chinese have allowed companies to set up uh, trading companies in, in China and to sell to the local market. So a lot of foreign companies are coming into China right now, and they are talking about how they can develop the local market. And this is a fairly new um, development, in the, probably roughly in about the last five years. Now, you have to basically take a look and see if your company's right for China. Uh, you have to consider your employees uh, back in the United States or whatever country you're coming from. The fact is, is China right now, this year, is not the most popular country in the world. Uh, it does have a public image problem. Certainly, if you're in the manufacturing sector, uh, you have to be sensitive to the fact that, um, that you may be moving some, some amount of your production uh, capacity to China. The fact is, is a lot of our clients actually haven't mentioned moving or closing factories in the United States. A lot of times they're just talking about uh, setting up new businesses, uh, setting up manufacturing in China to uh, export to other countries and not really affecting their own uh, local um, uh, manufacturing uh, capacities back in the United States. So. But, but this is a consideration that one has to keep in mind. I mentioned previously international experience. There is a, um, a valid question as to whether China would be the first country you would want to expand overseas to. Uh, there may be other countries that may be a little bit more closer to home and may be a little bit more familiar in terms of dealing with the government and, deal, and dealing with their laws. Uh, China is, is a very foreign um, area to invest in. I mentioned this also previously, patient capital, any investment in China has to be viewed in terms of years, in terms of turning a profit and uh, sinking costs. Uh, dealing with the government and laws, we'll, I'll discuss this a little bit later. Uh, cultural differences, that's, that's pretty obvious. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of challenges in terms of language and in terms of, uh, of how the Chinese view things versus uh, Western, Westerners. <coughs> 